Call of Duty World at War is a masterpiece. You don't need another fool on the internet to tell you that, so I won't. Instead, I want to talk about one particular mission that resonated with me more deeply than the rest of this game ever could. On my recent adventures to play World at War again, to experience the great liberty that was my young childhood, I came across something that actually resonated with me even after all of these years. And I want to talk about it in depth. I want to talk about precisely what resonated with me at that moment and, you know, the deepness of it. So please, sit back, enjoy. Now let's talk about a game that we all love. Keep your heads down! You hear me? Play as an American trooper, stationed across the seas to fight the Japanese. You got troopers laying dead all around you, but you can't focus on that right now. You gotta kill those Japanese across the point just so you can all get a threshold or something. You gotta go over there, take the point, and kill the Japanese. But truly though, the Japanese in this game are very well done. For a COD game, it's truly like crazy to think about, but the Japanese hide in these tall grass bushes on trees and hell they use your friends corpses as a trap and to be honest compared to any other cod game it's really odd it's not out of place it's not bad but it throws you off compared to every other cod game it's like oh wow these guys are different huh i'm playing halo now no but seriously the game is so violent with how it describes everything and it's treated as if yeah is kind of there but you're the one who's holding the flamethrower, so who cares? You got these dudes screaming on the ground, begging for their lives, shouting, please, I just want to see my mama. And you're like, no, I'm just going to burn you to death. You also get access to the ray gun in the previous mission before the flamethrower, which is pretty overpowered, but it's also optional, unlike the flamethrower, which it gives this feeling of true player freedom, which I love, I like. And even though the ray gun wasn't supposed to be there, it's a nice little addition, and I felt like it was well placed, even if it was just a goddamn easter egg, shut the hell up. But truly when you use these overpowered weapons, it gives you this power scaling that you never really feel throughout the previous, or eh, kind of nowadays Call of Duty games where you feel like the ultimate trooper, the dude in charge of everything. Not tactics, but pure powerhouse. You're the dude that takes out the enemy lines. You're the dude that destroys everything in front of your path. You are John117. I need to stop with these Halo references. But truly though, all the deaths that surround your enemies, your opponents, or hell, even if your teammates, if you, even if they weren't doing anything, like they always do. Guy trash. It's not really leveled or emphasized, but there is some very troubling captures to how enemies die. If you shoot them in the head, you know, they kind of fall over and, you know, die. But if an explosion or a ray gun goes off right next to them, they go flying. And it's not like that ragdoll haha <laughs> Gmod moment funny. It's actually kind of like, huh. Yeah, that was kind of brutal. A little. Or hell, even with the flamethrower. My younger self really loved the chaos to it. The flamethrower added such a level of destruction to it. But as I'm older, I realize, wow, that dude is in more agony than I probably have ever been in my entire life. And that dude is dead now. And it's not really emphasized or level onto it. The game kind of brushes it by as if it doesn't really matter. It doesn't care. And in the heat of combat, in an actual war, it doesn't. Because odds are you're probably focused on yourself or the objective. Nothing in between. But it goes to humanize a rather alienated faction. The entire enemies that you fight throughout this game is completely devoided from yourself. They're completely alienated. 
they speak a completely different language from you, and that builds a level of alienization. Alienization, is that a real word? Oh. And it makes the enemies not appear human, and that truly builds like this odd level to it that I really can't emphasize enough that this game does well. It makes the enemies feel like enemies. It doesn't make them feel human. You take out the tanks like a total boss giga chat, and you capture the point, killing all the Japanese soldiers that wanted to mount a counter assault, and yeah, no, you win. Simple as that. But all this victory and all this great accomplishments that you've done, ultimately someone did lose. And we're gonna see that very soon. The next mission starts off like any other. You're standing on the surface of Earth. You observe the video mashup of all the World War II footage. But you hear a different voice. A Russian voice. But, truly, you don't think it's any different. You think it's all the same, and you move forward. There's gonna be another normal mission. Where you go out, and you kill the enemy. Nothing more. Nothing less. Until, the mission starts. In this one moment, Call of Duty actually did history. It illustrated the destruction and chaos of war. In these starter moments, you hear one of the most somber and truly deep song that COD has ever produced. And it was used in its true best moment. If you don't know, this is the Battle of Stalingrad, estimated to be one of the worst battles of World War II, resulting in the death of an estimated million, and over 40,000 was also estimated to be civilians. This battle was one of the worst in World War II. According to all my sources, which I will be featuring in the description if you actually want to, you know, look up and read all of them. This was estimated to be the worst battle in World War II, and therefore the worst battle in human history. Throughout World War II, Germany was winning, but in this one battle, the Battle of Stalingrad, was the turning point of the war. And Call of Duty doing its diligence to respect it. This is not the most important battle of World War II, especially by Western media. But this battle, in particular, deserves so much respect for how many lives were lost due to this whole entire battle. And Call of Duty does it justice in the first 15 seconds, illustrating it by the dead corpses of your fellow brothers, birds raining in from the sky, not only as German planes, but also as crows, eating your dead. And as you see other brothers of yours struggling to barely breathe, German soldiers walk up and finish the job, sparing you in the process, and a dear friend that you'll soon find. Call of Duty did something that it has never done before ever since this game. 
In this one singular introduction sequence, Call of Duty created a moment that I personally resonated with. But this game did such a good job at illustrating the level of destruction, chaos, and evil that went on because of this whole entire war. Call of Duty did its damn job, and it doesn't hide it behind a veil. No. Pure evil is here. I wanted to take this dark and deep tone to this entire level because not only is it necessary, I feel like it is underrepresented in Call of Duty as a series. I've seen a lot of retrospective videos about World at War or the old Call of Duty games, but never before have I ever seen the true respect that this mission should deserve. And I feel like I should at least try to do it. Now, whether or not it does that is up to your interpretation. But this mission is more iconic to me than any other mission in any other COD game. Mainly because of that introduction sequence. That entire thing sold me on this mission. Reznov's little moment where he goes into the bar and reminisces about the old love and friends that he had, it worked so well at showing the level of deep embedded hatred that Reznov has towards the Germans. And what many Russian soldiers at that point probably felt. I do want to take a step back though and analyze the actual game itself. Where in the previous missions you did start off in these little ditch areas. You were not in a very safe location and you were amongst your dead fallen comrades. In the last missions it was brazed and scraped over. It was irrelevant. But for this one it takes center stage. Actually taking away the player's control in those few seconds to truly show the chaos and destruction in that mission. Vendetta truly shines in these moments where you would usually skip over death and destruction and chaos. For this mission, you can't ignore it, but for the record, it takes up to the first half of the mission. You literally crawl through a burning building as German rain hell fire down upon you and Reznov, not stopping until the entire building falls apart on you. I also would want to look back and simply state, before when I played these Call of Duty games in my younger youth, I truly did not connect or understand or realize the true tragedy and destruction this whole war brought. But I played this singular mission, Vendetta, and I knew deep within my heart and soul at that single moment when I first played the mission, I am witnessing chaotic evil. I knew that this mission was more important to the long scope of history than I could ever realize. And in truth, I could have never really perceived the chaos of this mission, especially on my young in age. But even though my mind was young, I still knew deep within my heart and soul that this was not simplicity, this was not a typical battle. This was a massacre. Now, I don't know if that made me on a different level of child intelligence, but I feel like that emphasizes something about a video game. When you can get a simple young mind to perceive the chaos and evil that is war, not just get them to think, oh cool, I'm just shooting a bad guy, it's an AI, oh it doesn't matter. Even if that's so, convincing a young mind to understand the true chaos and evil of a war like this is something that I cannot give enough credit for something. Even if it's for myself, I personally don't care. It's still convincing someone of what happened. It's still informing them in a way that doesn't sound childish or idiotic in a way. It's a brute honest understanding of the chaos of World War II. I wanted to specify all these things. I wanted to get a very deep and personal understanding in all of this, not to ruin your guys' day or anyone's mindset or anything like that. I just wanted to talk about a game 
a mission, a story that I love and respect beyond any shadow of a doubt. And even though Call of Duty is that coke friend addict that you have, and, well, shit, you can't really help him, I will still reminisce about the great times that I had playing this mission. But it's not over yet, we still got a mission to do. So, let's go do that. You and Reznov get captured by German soldiers with- What the f- What the f- Why is this dude spraying a flamethrower into the sky? The fuck? Who- Who would just shoot a flamethrower in the sky for no good reason? <laughs> Fucking idiot. Only to be saved by a Russian comrades. Thanks guys, we were definitely not about to get butchered right there. You grab your rifles, stare at the dead soldiers, only to ignore them because it doesn't matter anymore. And take up sniping positions while the rest of your boys throw an assault out. While in the last two missions you were the main guy in front, taking up the front point and really kind of being the main target of the last two missions, you're now playing the back lines, supporting your fellow comrades as they take up the front lines, using your own weapon against them. The flamethrower, with a very exposed backside, gets shot, blown up, and guess what? You did that. You're such a god. And it really sets up a contrast between the last two missions. With the last ones, you were the main frontline trooper, but now you're kind of just the sniper, dude. I don't know. I like it. I felt like it's the only time COD actually did a sniper mission and did it right. While at the start of the mission, death was kind of there. It was, you know, it mattered a little bit, like a lot. But in the next half of the mission, it's kind of raised over. It really doesn't matter because you're brought back into the Call of Duty formula of shoot your targets, dead, move on. I also loved how you actually need to be a supportive soldier for your team, taking out enemy snipers that are perching on top of these buildings and stuff just to protect them. And you know, you are the main dude protecting them, but it's not like they can't do anything for themselves, even though they can't. As you progress through the mission, you shoot down enemies trying to flank your ass, but you know, it didn't work because they suck. And I want to show something again. With the previous last two missions, you were more powerful than you ever were before. See, in the last two missions, you carried a flamethrower, a ray gun, and a missile launcher. Those were super powerful weapons that you use full advantage of, and they make you feel so powerful. While in these missions, the best you have is a sniper and a submachine gun, and maybe a couple of grenades, but that's at best. It really sets this little power leveling. While before you were kind of overpowered and stuff, in these missions, you're kind of getting dicked on because of those goddamn dogs. But really, I don't know. I love it, and it really makes you feel like you're kind of not meant to survive. As you progress forward, Reznov informs you that the target that he has been trying to kill for this whole entire mission is near. He's about to get destroyed, but he tells you you need to leave the rest of the Russian troopers behind, for their lives were sacrificed. If you have the option to not shoot and wait for your target to approach, or help them survive this battle. I, of course, love my Red Army, and I chose to help them out because, you know what, fuck you if you didn't. Which Reznov didn't support my actions, but you know what? You can't always win with Reznov. Ultimately, though, your main objective is to take out this German general. And the moment you do that, which of course you should get do it first try, not miss every five shots you take, but you know what, it's fine. Even though you like one shot at the sniper dude at the start, you like, you hit all your shots there, you know, it, it's fine, it's, it's, not, it's not bad or anything. The entire German army comes at you in full force because you shot a guy and now he's dead on the floor. They, they go out of their way to destroy two guys in a building. I don't know, it, it's, it's stuff like that, it kind of throws me off like... Sorry, bro. It hurt you that bad? You almost die, scraping death by, as Reznov leads you to the bay of a river. So you jump in there, and then, yeah. Ending the mission with the hat in sight. Then it cuts out, and then boom. The next mission starts. And thus ends the greatest mission in Call of Duty history, Vendetta. I wanted to do this whole section outside, you know, everything but the mic quality was terrible and also it was very windy outside 
So I felt like it was better to adhere. Anyway, I wanted to say thank you all for watching this video, of course, and everything like that. If you enjoyed it, and who knows, maybe I'll make something like this in the future, depending on how this goes. But if y'all want more, I'll probably consider doing more things around that. I am currently thinking of doing something around the latest Bethesda title. How do you try to do that subtly? I swear. But yeah, no, I, I'm just kind of open and thinking about these kind of things as I'm tripping around. But yeah, no, if you enjoyed it, do all the typical YouTuber things that everyone asks you to do, and yeah. But thank you for being here and, you know, supporting someone that you have absolutely no idea about, even if he might be behind you right at the second massaging your back. But anyway, I just wanted to say thank you all. Have yourselves a great day. And yeah, I don't know. Touch grass.